Well, greetings, curtly salutations, mate. Welcome back to another episode of... How do you do? All right, look, this is um, back to basics with this one. I've titled the video something catchy. I don't know, the biggest mistake everyone, uh, every invent, I don't know, something like that. It's invented file management. Now, a lot of people watching this, hopefully, will probably be like, ah, this, is, this is, everyone should know this. I, I do this all the time inside bread and butter. It should be. But kind of trust me, not everyone knows this. It's a surprising amount of people who just don't understand how to manage the files properly and how to structure the data so you stop getting those annoying prompts missing files and whatnot so let's hop over to inventor and take a look at a, a, a typical sort of storage situation that a lot of people will find themselves with a lot of companies might find themselves with we're forgetting about the existence of vault as well for the purposes of this video this is managing files on either your own system or on a map drive so a lot of people are going to have a, a folder like cad data right and then in there they likely will have ended up organizing the files into project folders, right? So I've got one called personal computer with all the assemblies, drones, and parts in there. And I've got one called stapler with assemblies and parts and drones in there. Two totally different projects, two totally different data sets. Uh, and channel members as well, you can get up these files and folders and data sets if you want to follow along. It's part of the membership for the channel. Click join under the video or on my channel's main page to join the channel to get access to my tutorial data vault. Okie dokie. So, at the moment, I'm working in Inventor with just the default project, which is what everyone will be using if they don't manage their files using projects. And I'm going to open up the personal computer. Oh, honestly, mate. For... Autodesk, right? Autodesk, please. For the love of all that's holy, why, why are these buttons still tiny? On for... what, what's... Move past it, Neil. It's not important. Do not digress. Okay, so open up the personal <laughs> personal computer. Uh, assembly. Everything should be fine. You're going to get the usual, do you want to update the assembly? And we're not going to tell you why prompt. <laughs> That's uh, par for the course at this point. But it, it works. It opens up. Everything's cushy. What if, though, and this, is this again, will be familiar to almost everyone who uses Inventor or any CAD system, right? You go into the personal computer folder and you decide, my folder structure's a mess. I need to move some files around. So you come into power supply. Go to the fan, fan part, anything, right? I want to I want to make a new folder where all the, the fans are going to be in. So I'm going to paste that into there. Like All you've done is move it between that folder to that folder there. But now when you open up that, uh, that personal computer assembly, Inventor's going to, it's going to lose its mind. It's like, well, where, where the hell's the, where's the fan gone? Where you moved it to? It, it's not in the power supply folder anymore. You, Inventor can't be expected to search every folder on your local area or even your wider area network to look for where you might have moved a file to, right? It could be millions of folders that it could have gone to. How is Inventor going to know? It knows by using project files, and that's how you sort this kind of a problem and how you manage your files. So projects, they've been, uh, it's, it's a pretty consistent workflow, but the location of where you get that projects is different in Inventor 2023. Now you've got this Again, Autodesk, please, please. Why do you have a radio button here with literally one option underneath it? What's the purpose of that? Just make that the settings button. Never mind, you'll move on. Move on, it's not important. Okay, so this is the projects dialog box. What you need to do in here is you create a project for every project you work on. That tells Inventor where the data files all the drones and parts and assemblies are going to be when you open up an assembly. It's defining an umbrella sort of structure where it can search for all the files for a data set. So when you select new, again, we're forgetting about the existence of Vault. We're just creating a new single user project. Give the project a name. The name doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be named after an assembly or anything. It's whatever you recognize or your company can recognize this project. It could be a project code. It could be the top level assembly or it could just be a description. So we'll call this personal computer project. And then the project workspace folder, this is the most important part. This is typically the top level folder where all the data files, why do I keep saying data files? All the files, <laughs> all the files are located. All right. So that's going to be this folder here, this personal computer, because everything for that assembly is located in this set of subfolders. So you want the project file to be at this level here. So we can search 
underneath the, the project file into all these subfolders. So you can just take that path and paste it into there. Or you can browse to it. You just use that little button there and browse to it. And then select finish. That's it. It's now created what's called an IPJ file, this one here. That personal computer project is loaded into this projects window. And it's telling Inventive whenever you click open, whenever you click save, whenever you do anything, all your files are going to be completely contained underneath this personal computer folder. And you can double click between different projects. And act you can only have one project active at a time. So if you think, well, how do I share files between projects, common files, I'll get to that in a second. But we'll double click the personal computer project, click done. Now, when you click open, it jumps straight to that personal computer folder. It doesn't go to your My Documents folder anymore, which is super annoying. But that's just a common folder that everyone's got. Uh, so this personal computer, now when you open up the assembly, that fan, it knows where to look for it. It now looks under all the subfolders and it goes, I found it. It's within the nice little home you've made for the project files, and it can open that up no problem at all. So there you go. That's how you properly manage your files. Keep everything within that folder structure. You can make as many folders as you want underneath personal computer. You can have as many sub-levels of folders as you want. You can move the files in between all of those folders, and it will always find them. What about the other project that I've got, though? Stapler. <laughs> it's just a very basic data set. But if we browse over to the stapler folder and open that up, you're going to get another message that's probably quite familiar. It's going to say the location of the selected file is not in the search path of the active project file. The active project file is this one here. And the search path are all of these folders. We've tried to open up a file in stapler. Do you want to continue opening it? You can say yes, and it will still open it up. But every time you click save, you're going to get that message saying that the file you're saving is not in the active project. It's really annoying, but it's a really easy, it's not even a fix, it's just the proper way of doing things. So this stapler is clearly a different project. So what you have to do, shut that down, go back over to this DAF menu, and then make a new project. We'll call this uh, stapler. Same workflow as before. Uh, stapler project. The project workspace folder is going to be D... Uh, CAD data stapler, again, top level folder, click finish. You've now got a project for the stapler and a project for the personal computer. When that one's double clicked and ticked, click done, click open. It's now going to take you to the stapler folder. When you open up the stapler, you're not going to get any annoying messages about files not being in the active workspace. It just opens it up just fine. And same deal with this. You move files between folders. If you create new subfolders, Inventor knows where to look for them. Uh, you're still going to be I guess this is sort of to be expected at this point. If you do take a component like that and move it to your desktop or move it to the W drive or the S drive, that'll be moved outside of the project workspace and it'll no longer be able to find it. So everything has to be contained within that folder for that project. Okay, let's take a look at the project settings for when you create and after you've created a new one, because there are some settings in here which do actually matter. So the set each project's got its own set of uh, settings, which it doesn't, I suppose it does change how the project works, but not too drastically, but you might be interested in them. So you've got type, which is single user. You can only have two single user or vault. So we'll stick with single user. The location, that's where the IPJ is saved and stored. So you can quickly, if you no, don't, what, what's that project? Where is it? Ah, it's in that folder there. Uh, you've got included file, right? Included file is if you've got a project file that you've made that's got a whole bunch of settings that you've configured in here. It's got, I haven't gone through the settings yet, so I can't really explain them, but if you've got like a template project file that you want to reuse to spawn a new project file, you can use an included file and that will inherit all the settings from an, other pro, from an old project file. Why is that? But move on, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> Neil, leave it. I've never used it myself, but it's that's what it does. Use style library. Right, the style library, I've probably made numerous videos on the style library in the past. The style library is a big global set of standards that Inventor uses to control dimension styles, text styles, arrowhead styles, uh, just notes, labels, that kind of stuff. And when you create a new project file, the style library is always defaulted to read only, which means you can't change a style in a local file 
like a dimension style, and then publish that into the style library to govern other drones with. Read write is the one where it did. You can upload changes to the style library. If you leave that as read only, any drawing edits that you make in terms of styles, like dimension styles and stuff, will only be changed in the local document. They won't be published up to the style library. Right, then you've got appearance libraries. I I honestly don't know why Inventor defaults to the Inventor Material Library. It's it's a legacy library that's been around for a long time, and it contains a bare bones set of really basic materials to use. The materials are a lot of people get confused between materials and appearances, uh, appear, which I've just done. <laughs> appearances. So this is the appearance libraries. This is material libraries. Appearance libraries. That's the texture. It's what the part looks like. Uh, and the Inventor Material Library has got a really limited set of appearances to choose from. I always change this to use the Autodesk, the Autodesk Appearance Library. So just double click that one, make that bold. Uh, and that's now the deep. So whenever you click the drop down at the top of Inventor and you see the list of textures, you get a much bigger list of views, the Autodesk Appearance Library. And those appearances are also better interchangeable between other Autodesk products. The Material Library is the physical materials like aluminium, like stainless steel, like uh, the woods and stuff that it's got in there. The, that defines the density and the mass of the parts. Again, the Inventor Material Library, which is the same as that one there, these two, sh the, the, they both contain appearances and materials. But the Inventor Standard one, it's a legacy and it's got a really limited set of materials in there. So I always, again, change that to the Autodesk Appearance Library. Uh, the workspace, right? We've already defined the workspace. It's just got a dot which means it's like a relative path and it's going to search underneath the personal computer. You can just leave it. Like when you slowly single click into there, you can see the path, but just leave that as a dot unless unless you've got a reason to not do that. But for the purposes of this, we're going to leave it as a dot. Uh, I, I'm going to come back to work group search paths in a bit because that's really important. Uh, libraries, li a library folder is a folder you can have within the project that you can save files into that inventor will deem as being read-only. Things like standard supplier parts that you can use, but you're not going to change. If you put them into a library folder, then uh, in, when you open them up, it, you, you can't save them or change them. Uh, to make a library folder, so we'll come back into personal computer, you can create a, a new folder called libraries. Come into here, and then you can say uh, Acme supplier parts, something like that. And then inside the projects window, you can right click on libraries, click add path. Now you can say this is going to be the Acme folder and then browse that silly little button to this computer, D CAD data, personal computer, libraries, Acme supplier parts. And then that now adds that as a library folder. And I'll show you where that appears in a second. Uh, frequently used subfolders. This is if you've got like a huge directory of folders underneath your project and you're constantly going to the same folder over and over and over again and it might be nested like really deep down like this processor fan folder you can take that long deep path uh, and then add that as a frequently used subfolder so you can paste that path into there and then you can call this i can't remember was this motherboards or something i can't remember what the name of the folder was motherboards uh, and that'll be a frequently used subfolder right folder options again <laughs> super important Folder options tell Inventor when you're using this project file, where are your drawing part assembly templates going to be sourced from? Also, which style library are you going to use? By default, Inventor uses the local templates and style library on your computer, which is default. If you, ho if you hover over it, you'll see where the templates are. They're on your users, public documents, Autodesk Inventor templates folder. You can browse to that and take a look at those, those templates, but those are the templates that inventor uses when you click file new you can you can take a copy of that folder move it to a network drive and then when you create a new project you can edit that and point the uh, the templates area to i don't know like w backslash where's backslash on this daft laptop so there, yeah, there it is uh, so the template's going to be in w inventor 2023 templates and then everybody who uses this project file will use the same set of templates on a network drive. So you can do that. Same with the style library, design data. You can copy that to a network location. Uh, presets, not going to worry too much about those here. And content center files. It, this is again, super important. There's so much that's really important with this uh, project setup. The content center files folder is when you use Inventor's content center to generate nuts, bolts, washers, pins, rivets, that kind of stuff. 
this is the path where Inventor is going to save those nuts and bolts. And it's a reference path that Inventor looks at whenever you open up an assembly. And it can be outside uh, the project location. So you can right click on that and you can go to edit. And it defaults again to my documents. And this is where a lot of people chip up with uh, sharing data between people in the office. If John has made an assembly and he's placed a bolt and the inventor puts that bolt into John's My Documents folder, when John sends the file or the assembly to Terry and Terry opens up the assembly, it's looking for the bolt in John's My Documents folder. That's not helpful because chances are John didn't send you the bolt. So what I tend to do in a lot of sort of larger corporation setups is change this path to again be a shared path, either on a network drive or somewhere inside a vault. But as long as you know what that is, be consciously aware of that path. Uh, you can change that to be inside the project file folder as well. So you can go to personal computer. You can say, we're going to make a new folder. We're going to call this uh, CC files. And then you can change that path there to be uh, D, where is it? This PC, D, CAD data, personal computer, CC files. And it'll put the, whenever you place a bolt now, it'll put it in that folder. So it's all going to be contained within this one project. The downside of doing that is any bolts and washers and stuff that you place from the content center are going to be inside this personal computer project. You can't then reuse them for Stapler. Stapler could have its own content center files folder, but then you've essentially got two copies of the same bolt in two different projects, which not so much of a big deal if you're just a one-man band or a small shop doing uh, creating data, but in larger organizations, that's it's far from optimal. But that's just be aware that that's what that is. Okay, now under options, you've got some settings, which to be honest, you just don't need to change. Old versions to keep. You may notice at some point that in most, I don't know if it's going to have one here. Is it going to have one here? Probably not. But in a, no, it's not going to have one. In a lot of folders where inventor files are, there's an old versions folder at the top. And those are, they're not auto save files, but whenever you save a file, it puts, an, it puts a, previous copy of the assembly or the part into an old versions folder when you click save. And this setting here is dictating how many of how many old versions it keeps. So setting this setting to minus one, that's going to make sure that all old versions are kept at all times. Whenever you click save forever, it's always going to stack another old version in that folder and it'll just keep stacking. Alternatively, you can say, I don't want any old versions. So you can set that to zero or you can say just which is the default, just keep one old version of everything that I save. Uh, you use unique file names. Yes, you want to have that on because you don't want two files with the same name inside your project folder. Uh, and that's about it really, right? The one setting that I didn't look at yet, which is really important, is work group search paths. So work group search paths, right? This is when you've got files that you need to share between projects. And you need Inventor to look into that path whenever you open up uh, a certain a certain data. So what I mean, right, take, again, it's a bad example because a personal computer in a stapler aren't really going to share any files. But let's say that fan. So I'm going to take the fan. Let's just pretend. Let's just let's take of this. Let's pretend. Both the personal computer and the stapler use this same fan part in both assemblies. So you can take that, you can come to your CAD data folder above both projects, and then you can create a new folder called, I don't know, My Company Standard Parts. And then you can drop the fan into there. Or you can have subfolders in there, it's up to you. Then in the personal computer project, you can go to work group uh, or work, yeah, work group search paths, add a path, browse to it. And there's a lot of setting up with this, but once you've done it, it's done. That's it. And then select my company standard parts. And then you can say this is going to be, I don't know, for fans and stuff. Finally, click save on the project. Now, when you open up the personal computer, even though that fan has been moved outside of the project workspace into another folder, Inventor is still going to look for the fan and find it because it's it's named in that project works or the, the work group search path. And that would be the same with the stapler. If the stapler used the fan, it would be able to find it because it's, well, I haven't put it in that project yet, but it could if that folder was named as a work group search path in the stapler project. So, mate, that's that's about it. That's about all you really need to know with projects. They are really, really important to managing data. 
Uh, you've got to keep that IPJ. You can either have the IPJ stored locally or you can save the IPJ onto a network drive as long as all the other files and folders are within the same folder on the network drive. But in essence, that's that's it. That's what a lot of people don't do and they end up in a right mess uh, with files being located all over the place, moving files, Inventor can't find them anymore. Manage your projects with project files and make sure you've got your search path set up properly, your content center files set up properly. Uh, and that's the way to do it. Uh, there is another couple of settings in here, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to get too bogged down on, but it's things like configuring content center libraries. So each project can have access to different content center libraries. For some reason, I don't have them installed on this laptop. I probably couldn't be asked to wait for them to install. But so for example, when you're working on a personal computer project, you might only want people to access the ANSI and the ISO library. So all these other libraries won't be available. Uh, and it won't show parts from them whenever you select place from the content center. So you can do that. Um, I would say that's about it, mate. That's about all you need to know with projects. You can only work on one at a time. And what some companies can do if they want to is you can have a global project for all your projects, right? So you can make a project, just call it, uh, I don't know, Tech 3D Project. And then the Project Workspace folder could be just the W drive the top level and then all your CAD files underneath that W drive you can have thousands of folders because it's underneath the, the where the project file is located in theory that should work there's nothing wrong with doing that there's pros and cons to both ways uh, but I'm now 22 minutes into this uh, I need to wrap this up because this, this is now getting too long hopefully that was enlightening and you learned some bits and pieces even if you did use project files you might have picked up something along the way uh, the, even though there's nothing much to gain from these files in the, the, the folders, they will be available in the Tech 3D Data Vault for channel members. If you select join underneath the channel or at the bottom of this video and join up for a channel membership, you can download those and have a play with what I've made. Uh, but bear in mind, if you do, <laughs> if you do download my project, it's going to have my D drive, for example, in some of the search paths. And if you don't have a D drive, you might have to, well, you will have to edit those paths to your own locations. But now that you know what to do and what it does, shouldn't be a problem, mate. Shouldn't be a problem. All right. Uh, I didn't have the screen on there. But yeah, like that D drive there. If you download the project, you're going to have that, whereas uh, you may not have a D drive with uh, on, on your system. Meet. That'll do for now. It's enough waffling, Neil. Crack on, move on, get this edited and uploaded. Thanks a lot. Watching Tech 3D. My name's Neil Cross. That's been How Do You Do? Inventive File Management. Another tutorial tip and trick from Tech 3D. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.